Hello. Welcome to the first getting started video using the Telerik Web Report Designer. The Web Report Designer is a JavaScript widget that allows developers to add report design capabilities to their web applications. The Web Report Designer can open, edit, preview, and save reports directly in the browser. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started by building a real world scenario with a drill down chart that fetches live data from a remote data source. We're going to start by creating a new project, selecting ASP.NET Core Web App. We'll name our project Telerik.WebReportDesigner.GettingStarted and click Next. We'll build a .NET 6 project and then click Create. Next, we'll add our web report designer widgets to the page using the Visual Studio item templates that get installed with Telic reporting. The item templates provide a wizard-like interface that saves a lot of initial configuration effort. Right-click on the project and select Add, New Item. We're going to search for Telic reporting. We'll select the Telerk Web Report Designer HTML5 page. We'll leave the default name for now and click Add. And rebuild the project. Next, the wizard will ask if you want to create a new REST service or use an existing REST service. The REST service contains the reporting engine that processes and renders reports but it also delivers styles and scripts on demand to the front end components. Since we don't have an existing REST service, we'll create a new one at this step. Finally, the wizard will ask you to select an initial report to load. If you don't have one in your project already, it'll give you the option to create a new sample report. You'll see a status page confirming that everything was created correctly. And now optionally, you can set the launch URL to have the web report designer be the initial page that opens on load. Okay, now we'll click run and see if everything works as expected. Okay. This looks good. We see the sample report. And the first time a user loads the web report designer, they'll see the onboarding guide, which walks you through the main tools in the designer. So we have the interactive design surface, where you actually create and style your report. The component tray, which contains all of the items that you can add to the report. The explorer which provides a tree-based structure of everything that's already in the report, including data structures. On the right, we have a properties pane, which will show you all of the properties and set values for the currently highlighted component. At the top left, the main menu, which allows you to open, save, and interact with all of your reports on a global level, along with the asset manager, which is where you store all of the report's assets. We'll look at that a bit later. We have a preview button, which shows you a true to life, pixel perfect rendering of what the report will look like. And finally, at the top, we have the global search box, a very powerful component uh, feature, which allows you to search the report instance for any property, value, component, data source, almost anything you need. It'll find the most logical um, item that you search for and it'll show it to you. We'll be using that quite a bit. Okay, our goal now is to create a new report. So we'll go to the main menu, click on new report. We'll name the report product sales and place it into a demo folder. 
click Save. OK, we have our new report. Now I want to delete the page header and page footer sections. So I'll click on them and press the Delete key on my keyboard. Next, I want to add a report header. So I'll press Control F to focus the search box and enter report header. Hitting enter focuses the item in the components menu. I can now click on it to add a report header to the report. And resize the report header. I now want to add a picture box to the report to contain our company logo. So I'll search for picture box and drag it into the report. And I'll position the picture box inside of the report header and adjust it slightly. Next, I want to upload our logo to the asset manager. So to do that, I'll search for the value property of the picture box using the global search box and clicking this button next to the value property opens the asset manager. The asset manager contains all of the assets for this report. So I'll select the images folder and click the upload button to upload our image. Click browse to find it on my system and open and upload. Now the image is in the asset manager. When I click save, the value property is populated with the path to the image and the picture box renders the image in real time. Now we'll add a title to our report by searching for text box and dragging a text box into the header. You can change the text of the text box in line. So we'll title this report sales by category. I can now position and adjust the size of the text box and apply styles by selecting the text box, typing style and finding the appropriate font styles. We'll make the text bold, center it, align it to the middle and maybe make it 22 points. Now we can position and realign the text box in our report. Maybe move it over to the left. Good. Next, we want to add the chart that's going to show the sales data. So we'll adjust the detail section height to give us a little more room to work. Our chart is going to need a data source. So we'll use the web service data source to fetch data from a remote source. For the service URL, we're going to use a known URL to the Telerik demo site. This points to a JSON data file, which we know is reliable. On the next page, the wizard asks for any request parameters. We don't require any. The third page is asking about whether you want to use real-time data or mocked design time data. You have the option of retrieving your data at real time anytime it's needed or uploading a JSON file to the asset manager or using an inline JSON file to supply design time data to the report designer. We'll choose the real time option and click next. Finally, the wizard will preview the data source in real time. We can see we get a result set back. So we'll click finish and move on. You can see in the Explorer tab that I have a new web service data source available. We'll now create a column chart using it by searching for column in the search box and dragging a chart onto the report, which will load a configurator onto the right pane. I can now select my web service data source from the data source dropdown. I'll use the product category field for the categories of the column chart. And we'll use the line total field for the value section of the column chart. 
finally clicking the create button will render the chart in real time and load it with real time data. Excellent. Our final task is to style the column graph. So we'll start by hiding the legend. We'll type legend into the global search box and find the style section, expand it, and set the visible property to false. We'll then enter the title section, select graph title, expand style, and set the visible property to false there as well. Preview looks good. So we'll use the preview button now to render a pixel perfect representation of this graph in our HTML5 report viewer. Perfect. This concludes part one of getting started with the web-based report designer.